So now in this lesson, we'll go through indirect lighting. Now I have this scene which is completely dark because there is no light over here. So I'll go to the lights and I'll take a spotlight and I will put just put the spotlight here somewhere and then I will put it up. So you can see, so here is my uh, object and this is my spotlight. So what I will do here is that first of all, let's make the cone smaller. Okay. Inner cone just like this. So we have this sort of a light here. Okay. And I will just move it up somewhere here. I think the source length is too much. Let's reduce the length here. So here is my attenuation radius. I will just reduce this so it will become small. That's all. Okay. So what I want is that I'll just put this behind my statue. Okay. So as you can see, the light is behind the statue right now. Let me go out of the game mode here. Sorry, I will be, uh, let's move to the game mode. So I've pressed G to move in the game mode so I can see everything clearly. Now here, notice that how my uh, statue is lit up. It is mostly lit up from the back. The reason is that because the spotlight is behind and nothing is uh, like lit up from the front area. So what I will do here is that let's go out of the game mode and then you can see that this is how the light is falling. What if I'll take a plane, okay, drop it here somewhere on the scene and I will make sure the plane is bigger in size, something like this. Okay, and then I will move this plane right here down and kind of facing somewhere here. Now, if you will see the light, if I move it a little bit here and increase the attenuation. Let's increase the attenuation a little bit more. Okay. Uh, I think this should be other way around. Maybe it is upside down. Yeah. Now, as soon as I move it here, notice how this is reacting with the statue. So what is happening is that this spotlight is falling on this plane which is a white color plane and white color reflects so it is reflecting the light back to my statue so if i hide this plane so you can see it's dark again and if i unhide it it is light up uh, it's lit it again so that's what the indirect light do now Every light, whenever you uh, like select the light, first of all, if you're animating, make sure it is movable. And otherwise, you have to rebuild the lights every time. So ev any light that you're uh, working on and you're only working on cinematics, make sure they all are movable. Plus, in your lights, you have indirect light intensity. So this, if I increase it, you can or decrease it, so you can see this is affecting my scene. So this is how, now it is zero, it's not affecting my scene anymore. My scene is dark. Let's uh, uh, go to the game mode. So now if you can see it is dark. Now if I will lit it up, you can see it is getting brighter, more brighter. So one is basically uh, the actual. So this is how your indirect lights work. 
and opposite of the indirect light is basically like more like light reflection. Uh, if you have a light reflection, that is the indirect lighting. But if you have instead of a uh, white color, if you have a black color, so your object will not reflect the light. It will absorb the light, uh, absorb the light, and when it will absorb the light, it will uh, it can block the light as well. So, for example, if I will quickly, if I will uh, make a, uh, if I will take this dark uh, material and drop it here, so you can see how it has affected the indirect light. Before it was white, now it is dark. So you can also block the light with the with this material. Like if I can move it up, you can see it is affecting the light blockage. Maybe if I will move it here. Okay. So the way you want to block the light, you can block the light easily with this. So let's delete it here. And let's take a look at another example. Now in this scene, I have an, uh, I have an interior of a room. And if you will notice that the light is passing through the window and it's reaching here, but it's not reaching at this point somehow, because, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it's kind of a uh, long room and the light might not reach to the end. But what if you want to uh, to spread the light in the whole room and you want to increase the indirect light? What you can do is that you can just go to your directional light and inside your directional light, you can start increasing your indirect light intensity. Right now, my intensity is six. What if, if I'll... Uh, make it one so you can see it is automatically dark if I will make it six it will be bright because what it is doing is that the light is hitting on the walls these surfaces which are white color that's why like uh, mostly like off-white color that's how it is reflecting on the other uh, areas so the light reflection strongly uh, is like you know based on the color of the objects where it is hitting on. So if I have a green room, so most uh, like my ambience of the room will be green because hitting on a green wall will create a green ambience. So basically that's what it do uh, when it comes to the reflection. It counts the color and based on the color, it ref more like reflects. So if I will change the six to maybe 20, so you can see the whole room is more lit up. Doesn't look too realistic, but uh, just to show you how you can get um, like a indirect light setup here. Okay, so I hope this is more clear to you. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now and don't forget to hit the bell icon. By the way, I have noticed that many of you are watching my videos without subscribing. So let's change that. Subscribe to my channel and be the part of the interactive community. Now. Here's something really important I want to talk about. Please do not download my videos. Just watch them online. When you download them, it messes up my watch time hours. And that's a bummer. I want to keep creating awesome videos, but it's demotivating when I lose out on those stats. Thanks a bunch for your support. You guys rock. Catch you all in the next video.